I'm going to pick your brain because I let's, for example, let's pull up the D line first who we've been talking about. So I kind of categorize them how I have them on here. This isn't the Bears official. This is how I list them out. So I've got my starters, my backups, my depth, and guys who I consider practice squatting, practice squad and cut candidates. Because we we have these signings during the offseason. We have players that we pick up and we sign to league minimum contracts. And a lot of fans see that as, oh, we filled that hole. But the reality is you're bringing 90 guys in for training camp. You're going to have a 90-man squad that you then cut down to 63 and you or 53 and you get it down to where you go into the season so a lot of these guys even dominic robinson who we had on the team last year you see i have him on the bottom of the list he's not panning out he's not working out in my opinion this isn't might not be how the bears see it but i've got the guys that are, are locks to be the team on the top row there there are starters even zach pickens but then byron cowart right now he's on the team we signed him jacob martin's on the team we signed him but I have two big X's above them because I can see them easily being replaced during the draft or as a critical need for us. What do you think our biggest needs are on this defensive line first? Um, definitely right where you have it. I, I agree. A defensive end and then interior defensive line. Um, they're almost neck and neck, 1A, 1B for me. And, you know, that's to pair that up with positional values in the draft. Um, when you take a look throughout the league, at you know top 10 defensive ends top 10 defensive tackles contract wise if these guys are getting paid that means they're out there performing right and then you right. kind of uh, just take the average um draft position of those guys you find that defensive ends and defensive tackles go in round one they're you know to get premier guys at that position you got to draft them in the first round typically there are some outliers i know max crosby was a fourth round pick but you know guys like nick bosa that's a second overall pick. Guys like Miles Garrett, that's a first overall pick. I mean, so these guys go high, and they do make a giant impact. We could definitely use somebody across from Montez Sweat and then have Demarcus Walker be that backup position. Um, you know, with the interior defensive line, Javon Dexter, Andrew Billings, and then, yeah, we have third-round pick Zach Pickens in there. And then, yeah, it kind of gets hazy after that, and, you know, we're, we run a 4-3, so – you typically like five of those guys on the roster, in my opinion. So these are both yeah. critical needs, in my opinion, and they need to be addressed fairly early in the draft if you're going to address them appropriately. If not, you're just going to be finding bodies to fill in there. Well, that's kind of what we have right now. You look at that Jacob Martin, he, he's not made it in the NFL. He's really fighting basically to be on a team at this point. And he would be a, he'd be a Khalid Kareem. He'd be a defensive end five. So uh, I know a lot of people, and I just saw one, Eric Harper, Right there, trade down, we snag defensive end next year with this stat class. You mentioned that uh, Nick Bosa went second. But do you see in this class, do you see Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, uh, Leatu Latu, Chop Robinson, do you see any of them as that high quality, though, where they're worth taking at number nine in this draft class? Um, That's why my preferred choice is to trade back, because I still think you yeah. can get one of those guys – because the depth is there, it seems like, this year in this draft. And I know next year's draft is supposed to be stacked with them, too. But, you know, this is a year-to-year -year thing. If you can address it this year and you like one of those guys, um, personally, you know, Dallas Turner is a very good all-around player. Um, I've heard some people that came on my, my podcast say that if he was the guy that fell to nine, he may be the guy that you just can't pass up. Um, unfortunately, the team needs are the team needs. And, you know, I know you mentioned earlier that you might like a guy – that's great, but you have to sit there and weigh that with how many guys do we need, <laughs> right? Because at some point, the, the value may be in quantity this year and just kind of helping, helping get some depth going, um, even if it's not premier. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Pick nine, I guess Dallas Turner. I, I Jared Verse maybe, but that would be about it. But still, my, my first preference is trade back. And now everyone's talking about Brock Bowers and how he could fit with the Bears. And it's true, because Shane Waldron runs multiple sets. He runs 12 personnel, he runs 13 personnel, he runs 11 personnel. And a lot of people say, well, why didn't he run more 12 personnel in Seattle this last year? Because clearly it was an issue. And, and just so everyone's clear, we've, we've talked about it before, I'm not going to do a huge breakdown on it, but personnel sets just mean how many tight ends. The last number is how many tight ends are on the field. So 11 personnel just means one running back, one tight end. 12 personnel, one, and right, one running back, two tight ends. Uh, and so on and so on. And sometimes you can run uh, 13 personnels, which would be a situation if you drop 
if you draft Brock Bowers, in fact, let's pull him up real quick. Here's Brock Bowers. I haven't done a big video on him yet, so I'm just going to bring him up here. Here's some of his metrics from NFL Draft Buzz. and Him compared to the other two uh, tight ends that we have. Now, note, Brock Bowers in red is his college stats. And college stats always come down when you transition to the NFL, especially at the tight end level. There is an adjustment to be made at the tight end level or the tight end position, but his drop late rate is low. His contested catches are good. Uh, his receiving grade, which would be the next one, P receiving, PFF receiving grade is solid for college. His pass blocking grade solid, run blocking grade solid. He's really a glorified X receiver playing tight end that can block. So there's a lot they could do with him that could mix up, that could really keep the defenses on their toes. And I like the idea of it. Do you think Brock Bowers is someone that we could draft at nine? With all this buzz going around, is he someone you would want to take a flyer on at nine? When you hear uh, the other stuff about how that position, you usually want to draft higher positions where they're a higher valued uh, contract position. And tight end isn't one of those top tier positions like quarterback and wide receivers turning into defensive end, like you mentioned. Would you take a flyer on Brock Bowers at nine? Me personally? Uh, no, I would pass. Um, however, there is a, uh... He, he's a really good football player from everything yeah. I've seen. He's, he's a great player. And, you know, there's this mentality that you take the best player available. And if he's there at nine and you apply that to that situation, that could, you know, make sense if you're following that type of rhetoric. Uh, me personally, I just, like I said, I, I look at the needs on the team. I just don't feel that tight end is that big of a need where we'd have to get one at pick nine. And, you know, even if he's a great player and whatnot, I, I'd still – I would pass him up. Um, I would try and trade back. We need we need other positions more, in my opinion. What other positions would you consider at number nine? You know, and here's where I get the most uh, – like you said, we've been agreeing so far. Here's where we might split a little bit because I get a lot of slack for, you know, really ultimately my number one thing is trade back. I just think that – uh, you know, and if not defensive end, outside of that, you know, I'm I'm one that, like, even if Marvin Harrison Jr. fell to nine, I would be happy because I'd be getting a bigger haul for trading back. And I'd, and I'd you pass him take, up, too. I would you not wouldn't take, take Marvin at nine? Well, no, because, you know, one, it's the position of need is wide receiver three. And, I mean, I get that you're doing it for the future, but um, you look at these guys around the league that have – been drafted top 10 in the history and not many of them have gone off and actually had Super Bowl rings in their careers. You look at guys throughout history that were good wide receivers, guys like T.O. that had, you know, Hall of Fame caliber talent and due to their attitude and, and whatnot, they bounced around five teams. And then you look at other situations like Antonio Brown being a fifth round pick, Tyreek Hill being a fifth round pick, Cooper Cup being a third round pick. Last year, Puka Nakua set records as a fifth round pick. Um, these guys are deep. These guys are deep. So you, if you can get a wide receiver, we still need a wide receiver. I'm not saying we don't. I'm just not willing to take one at nine. And I think I would much more prefer the haul it would bring me if he dropped back rather than to take one player. I, I just think this team still needs more depth. It really does. And and listen, I'm not – and I just want to say, I'm not opposed to the idea in general. I just think you have to be in position to do it. The Eagles were in position to do it a couple of years ago when they drafted Devonta Smith. They had a pretty complete team, and that's when you could go ahead and take a guy like that. that that's not where we're at. I still feel we're pretty depleted, and therefore we still need to address that first. Mm -hmm.